Hey everybody, today on Table Talk, we're going to talk about sculpting minis and how I go from this to this. This episode is brought to you by The Lost Gardens. Set in the corporate operated hub city, Sean Myers finds himself questioning whether anything is real after his augmented reality implants began to fail and the real world begins to reveal around him. A world not plastered with the latest upgrades or newest fads, just crumbling concrete and angry people left in the dust of progress. Sean will get more than he bargained for and find himself in a new world outside the technological utopia of Hub City, where the seeds of fear were planted long ago. You can find the latest episodes of The Lost Gardens on Cosmicology. Just click the link in the description below. So the idea for today's episode came from one of our patrons, Irene, who wrote to me and asked, could you do a video on some of the most popular 3D sculpting programs or what I prefer? That kind of led into this whole idea of, you know, what is my process when it comes to sculpting miniatures? So over the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about uh, sculpting programs. We're going to talk about my own personal sculpting process, um, how I create and design miniatures, and then we're going to talk about 3D printing. If you want to join the Patreon uh, and support this channel as well, you can go to patreon.com forward slash mimics and miniatures and uh, get all the details there. It's not only going to go and support this channel so we can keep making great videos like this, but you will also get an inside look to my next Kickstarter. Uh, which is coming up soon called The Reign of the Necromancer. If you want to get more videos like this, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of these videos. And let's get right into it. For those people who do a lot of 3D sculpting for miniatures, uh, kind of one of the main uh, key go-to programs is ZBrush. Uh, ZBrush is a very dynamic uh, sculpting software available both on Mac and PC. From the people who I personally learned sculpting from, that's what they use. It's a very, very powerful program. It's used a lot in video games and film and, and all that kind of stuff. It's got all the tools and all the brushes you would need in order to create great sculpts. There are two different versions of it. There is your, your main ZBrush, uh, which is kind of their professional quality level. Uh, software and then they also have something called ZBrush Core which is essentially kind of a almost like a watered down or beginner version of ZBrush. In terms of what we do for 3D sculpting um, there's not a whole lot of difference. I think a lot of the difference comes when you're doing it for film or video games um, but if you are sculpting for 3D miniatures uh, you can really get away with both of them. They have all of the necessary tools for ZBrush, you can pay $39.95 a month and that will get you full access to the application. I know some people don't like the kind of the subscription model, so you can go out and buy the actual product and it's just a standalone purchase. Um, I believe that goes for $8.95 uh, at the time of me shooting this video. For ZBrush Core, it's much more affordable uh, for those of you getting started. Uh, it is $9.95 a month uh, to subscribe to that or you can buy a full uh, package the full application for I believe it's 179. The next popular choice uh, for sculptors is Blender. Now Blender is traditionally seen as a 3D modeling application but they also have lots of really great sculpting features. Kind of the great thing about Blender is not only is it available on pretty much every platform, you've got Windows, Mac, and Linux covered, um, but also it is free. Yes, you can download Blender completely free and have access to all the capabilities of it. So it's definitely one that I highly recommend and I use it quite a bit in my own sculpting process. Um, I don't use it for sculpting itself, but there are features of it specifically that I use and I'll get to what I use uh, in a moment. So really Blender has like everything you need uh, to get started. So that's probably where I would recommend, especially if you are just getting started in the sculpting and you're not sure if this is something that you want to continue to do. Um, I highly recommend taking a look at Blender. Um, it can be a little bit tricky uh, when it comes to sculpting, either with this or ZBrush. 
um, to kind of get some really great sculpts, especially if you're using a mouse, that could be really tricky. A lot of sculptors will invest into something like a Wacom tablet, the tablet and the pen stylus type of thing. You can get a lot more accuracy uh, when it comes to sculpting the minis. So I do recommend taking a look at those. There's a whole bunch of those available. You can find them on Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, you know, pretty much anywhere you can uh, buy electronics, you can grab one of those. Um, they're not super expensive. There's obviously, you know, much more expensive ones where you actually have the display um, that you can draw directly on the display to much cheaper ones that you can get where it's just a little tablet with a little pen. It just connects either by Bluetooth transmitters um, or just like your traditional USB cable. And finally, we come to my own personal favorite when it comes to sculpting minis. I've gotten a lot of people commenting that, wow, you, you actually do all your sculpting on an iPad. And yes, yes, I do. I do all of my sculpting right on my iPad Pro. Uh, it's a 2018 version of the iPad Pro. Uh, I use my Apple Pencil and the application that I most prefer uh, is called Nomad Sculpt. Uh, Nomad Sculpt is amazing. It's very powerful. Um, it's got all the tools that I need for sculpting. It does everything uh, that I want to do. It's got the right brushes, creasing and, and uh, clay and layers and yeah, fill and flatten and all that kind of stuff. It's got actually some pretty good, as of the last update, some pretty good rendering capabilities. So I've actually been rendering all of my sculpts uh, for social media directly on my iPad, directly inside of Nomad Sculpt as well. They recently added ambient occlusion, which kind of gives like some darkness to um, the different, uh, like almost like shading um, to your render. They also added uh, depth of field, so you can have you know certain parts of your model uh, in focus and other parts kind of blurred. Uh, so there's a lot of really great rendering capabilities now uh, inside of Nomad Sculpt. Nomad Sculpt is only, I believe, as of the time I'm shooting this video, it only costs 15 bucks. So it's definitely very reasonable. Um, for those of you who do not have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, it is also available on Android, which is really exciting. If you have an Android tablet, a powerful one, I would definitely recommend. Uh, and a really good stylus um, you can create directly on your Android as well. Uh, I have a Chromebook, Samsung V2 Plus, I believe it is. Uh, it's got the stylus and I can actually craft directly on there. Um, I've tested it out, it works great, it's fantastic. I still prefer that over uh, using like a mouse or uh, one of those pen tablets on my PC. Actually, I have a Mac. Um, so I definitely, it's, it's by far my favorite method. For me, it's just, I like being able to kind of see what I'm sculpting directly when I'm sculpting and having a really good response time to it as I'm doing it. Um, there is also another really great application on the iPad called Forger. That's where I started uh, when I started doing it. It, I believe at the time of shooting this video, it cost about $10 to get Forger. Um, it's a great application. But once Nomad Sculpt got released, I found myself using that more and more, and now I use it exclusively, mostly because I found um, it had more of the stuff that I would like to do and the way, like the method and the workflow I like to operate in. And now with the new updates, it's, I, I believe, much more powerful. Now, that being said, uh, I will be fully transparent and I have not used Forger for several months, so I don't know you know, what its capabilities are. It may have grown leaps and bounds. I should actually go and check that out and see where they're at. Um, but definitely Nomad Sculpt is by far my preferred way of sculpting. So that's kind of a quick rundown of sculpting applications. Um, I've shared with you my favorite one, my favorite method. Uh, in the next couple of videos, what I'll actually do is we'll go through my process of sculpting. So you'll actually see me you know, jump on my iPad Pro and work from the ground up in terms of sculpting a mini. Um, if there is any questions related to that process, feel free to uh, comment down below. We'd love to hear from you and want to make sure that we're covering uh, the material that you want to hear in this whole process. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like, subscribe if you want to get more videos just like this and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos um, if you want to suggest more videos 
feel free to comment down below. You can also reach me on Twitter at Phil McNevin. You can also reach me on Instagram, which is at Phil McNevin as well. So looking forward to hearing from you. I also want to thank all of my patrons who make this channel possible. Uh, you can see all of them listed right up on the screen right now as well. You'll also get access to some of the minis that I sculpt if you're into that sort of thing. I release those on a monthly basis and you can get access to some of the monstrous mimics uh, that I've released on my last Kickstarter campaign. Um, that one, I'm still working on some cool uh, miniatures, so can't wait to release those. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.